Hello, we're team 23019. I'm Nate Bouchong and I'm the team lead and systems engineer. I'm Don Fox, I'm an optical engineer. I'm Ethan Potoff, I'm an electrical and computer engineer. I'm Mo Reynolds, I'm an optical engineer. I'm Chase Tonchev, I'm an optical engineer. I'm Rachel Turner, I'm an optical engineer. The purpose of this project is to design and build an optical scatterometer to be used by the Ball Aerospace Stray Light team in their research laboratories. Light will scatter as it interacts with the surface depending on the surface properties. This interaction can cause unwanted stray light to reach the focal plane of an optical system, thus compromising system performance. Stray light analysis is important for an optical system of any scale. A detailed stray light model of the James Webb Space Telescope, an infrared observatory orbiting the sun a million miles from Earth, was constructed and analyzed before its launch. Stray light analysis is essential for a system of this complexity, as even small amounts of unwanted stray light can compromise image quality, such as that of the images taken of the first galaxies formed in the universe. Scatterometers are devices used to measure the light scattering properties of a material. The scatterometer shines a laser onto a test sample and measures the scattered power emitted from the sample as a function of angle in the plane of incidence, the data from which is collected and used to make a bidirectional scattering distribution function. The BSDF characterizes the scatter distribution of optical radiation from a surface, representing the ratio of the scatter radiance of the surface to a radiance incident on the surface, thus facilitating facilitating the analysis of stray light in the system. Our functional requirements encompass the main functionalities of the system. The system shall illuminate a sample with a laser source and measure the scattered light from a test sample as a function of the angle of incidence and scattering angle in a single plane. The system shall be able to vary the data collection parameters based on user input, collect data automatically, and create a visualization of the collected data in real time. The system shall compute relevant optical values related to the scattering data and save the collected data in a format readable by optical design software. We approach the design with a literature review of John Stover's book, Optical Scattering Measurement and Analysis. Before we go into more detail about each subsystem of our design, we'll provide a brief overview. Light from a Heaney laser shines through a rotating chopper wheel with a fixed frequency. The light propagates through the neutral density filter and then hits two planar alignment mirrors. Then a microscope objective is used to expand the beam. A precise pinhole is used as a spatial filter to clean up the beam. The concave mirror is used to focus the beam. The beam propagates through the sample plane and onto the detector. The detector is mounted on the detector arm whose rotation is controlled by the detector rotation stage. The sample is mounted to a kinematic mount which is connected to the sample rotation stage. Stepper motors and their associated stepper motor drivers control the sample rotation stage and detector rotation stage. An Arduino controls the motor drivers and the switch for the transimpedance amplifier. The analog lock-in amplifier receives inputs from the transimpedance amplifier and the photo interrupter on the chopper, allowing it to lock in on a single frequency and eliminate noise signals at frequencies other than the reference frequency. The analog lock-in amplifier outputs to the red pataya, which is used for data acquisition. The GUI, which is contained on the user's personal computer, is connected to the red pataya and the Arduino. Now we will go into detail about our optical system. Optical design has been integral to our scatterometer. Light from a heat laser shines through a chopper, a neutral density filter, two planar alignment mirrors, a microscope objective, a spatial filter, and a concave mirror. The beam then propagates through the sample plane and onto the detector. The goal of our optical system is to measure the scattered power from the sample at angles away from the sample's normal. This was in conjunction with classifying the sample's bidirectional scattering distribution function, BSDF. On the optical mechanical side of our project, we had one main obstacle, expansion and focusing of the beam. The importance of beam expansion and focusing is to optimize the solid angle from the detector to the area at which the light hits the sample, which is an important part of calculating the BSDF. We chose microscope objective as the solution to expand the laser beam and a spatial filter to clean up the beam. Beam expansion is vital in our system to fill the concave mirror, which then focuses the light onto an area of the sample, and then focuses it to the detector. The cleaning of the beam with the spatial filter is useful in working with stray light, as it limits the amount of error that will be seen from the Gaussian profile of the laser. Tonnage was done to ensure that all parts placed within the system had either the correct precision tools attached or are able to be placed by and by hand. This was done to make sure that the encircled energy of the detection plane was no less than 91% at 500 micron diameter. After electronically, we required a detector with a high dynamic range, low dark current, and standard responsivity in order to detect very low signals to scatter light. The 500 micro diameter aperture is placed in front of the detector to reduce the detecting area. Modeling has been an integral part of designing our system. Concerning optics, we have to ensure the system's feasibility with alignment and scattering issues. Using an optical software like FRED, we were able to predict how light behaves throughout our system by modeling the entire system with the optical system, sample, detector, and mechanical components. With the help of our sponsors, we constructed a simulation that allows the user to input the sample angle, the initial detector arm angle, the final detector arm angle, and the step size. The detector arm then rotates around the sample according to its inputs and records the power reaching the detector at each position. This helped us determine the expected scatter and make design adjustments to mitigate unwanted scatter from the optical system reaching the detector. Additionally, we are using the FRED software to analyze the BSDF results of the measurements our scatterometer takes against known scatter data of a test sample to measure the accuracy of our system. Next, we will talk about our electrical system. The greatest challenge in a data collection system is identifying and eliminating noise. 
Our two main sources of noise, electronic noise and detectors guard current, produce a DC signal that reduces our signal to noise ratio, which prevents us from distinguishing our desired signal, which is already at a very low optical power, from noise. Our solution for the issue of external noise was the implementation of a lock-in amplifier. Lock-in amplifiers function by extracting a small signal with a known carrier frequency out of a large amount of noise. To remove the effect of the amplitude of the reference signal and the phase difference, we designed a reference signal that would be perfectly in phase with the laser beam. When creating the reference signal, we utilized a photo interrupter, which produces a 5 volt output signal when the line of sight between the LED and the photodiode is active, and a 0 volt output signal when the line of sight is broken. Thus, we designed the chopper so that the chopper wheel goes through the line of sight of the photo interrupter. Additionally, we placed the photo interrupter directly below the laser beam on the chopper wheel, which causes the detector signal and the reference signal to be perfectly in phase. The team designed and 3D printed the chopper stand and wheel to save money on the project. We control this chopper with a DC motor. Optical choppers like this cost over $1,000, but our cost was just under $200, allowing the team to get needed results while staying within the budget. We also designed our own transimpedance amplifier, which converts the current read from the detector into an output voltage. Additionally, it is capable of switching between different gain settings. It was also designed to minimize parasitic capacitance. Other important components of our electrical system are the RepiTi, which acts as our data acquisition device with a 14-bit analog-to-digital conversion resolution, and the Arduino, which controls our two stepper motor drivers and all the other motors in our system. The associated stepper motors control the large rotation stage for the detector arm rotation and the small rotation stage for sample stage rotation. Next, we'll talk about our mechanical system. We match our system using 80-20 aluminum extrusions, which protrude from the side of the box and act as our handles. The structure must be strong and sound in order to hold every component of our system. Stress analysis as well as a complex SOLIDWORKS model informed our decisions concerning this. The box is made of black painted wood which will isolate the system from external light interfering with the measurements. Our system featuring a larger box encompassing the detecting subsystem attached to a smaller box around the optical system. The side of the box that connects these two systems acts as a baffle with a small hole cut where the laser beam propagates into the system. In order to save money, we designed and 3D printed our own mounting for the chopper and neutral density filter arm. The arm is controlled by a servo motor that moves the neutral density filter into the beam path if the detector is saturated and out of the beam path if not. The chopper mount and wheel were also designed in SOLIDWORKS and 3D printed. Our graphical user interface allows the user to interact with the scatterometer in a straightforward manner. We constructed the GUI in MATLAB. The software allows the user to input the sample angle, initial and final detector angle, and step size that the detector will rotate at. The user may also input these variables through a parameter file. The GUI also features a live graphical view of the optical power with respect to the detector angle. This allows the user to see results as the detector is collecting data. Another component of the GUI is the calibration controller, which allows the user to perform a calibration on the system. The deliverables to our sponsor include the physical scatterometer, the GUI and associated software, the operations manual, and the FRED model. This project came with many challenges that tested our engineering skills. With a limited budget for a project of this scope, we were tasked to come up with creative, cheap, and effective solutions to budgetary issues. The most noteworthy acts of working within our budget were designing a programmable TIA, finding uses for discarded parts, and building our own chopper and neutral density filter arm. We also witnessed a key principle of systems engineering about changing designs. In the beginning, the cost to change the design was very low, but as we approached the second half of the project, change became a luxury we could no longer simply accept with our time and budget constraints. This is a demonstration of the rotation of both the large rotation stage and the small rotation stage. These videos are time lapses as the rotation will be slow in order to take measurements at very small increments. To this point, we have completed the FRED model of the system that will be given to Ball Aerospace. The box and frame have been completed with the electrical system integrated. In the last few weeks of the project, the aim is to complete the code and run tests on the finalized version of the system to verify all of the system requirements.